Hello? Hi. I can't hear. <laughs> no, no, the bus going by. <laughs> <laughs> really? Hey. There we go. You got it? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Is this a Verizon commercial? <laughs> I, I hope so. Can you hear me now? Hello? No? Good. Technical difficulties, bear with us. This is still a few hello. Hello? Don't worry. It's, it's a human malfunction. It happens all the time. I don't think I can hear you through the... Hello? Hello? Hey, oh. <laughs> oh, wee. I can't hear her. How about now? No. No. I'm not hurt. No, no. I can't even hear you two. I can uh, hear you just not through the headphones. Can you hear me now? Hello? Oh, I'll just play some music. I don't know. No, don't play some music. <laughs> this is going to be like two hours okay. of hello? 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 <laughs> okay. Anyways. This Verizon does not work. <laughs> yeah, I have Verizon. Right. We don't know if you can hear us or not, but if you can't, oh well. Good evening, everyone. I've, st I've stolen a microphone. <laughs> All right, we're good. Yeah, and we're live uh, until we figure out my mic difficulty. I am Morgan Danielle, and this is a piece of metal. Um, actually, tonight we're doing a little bit uh, different. Well, that made no sense because I'm trying to fuck around with this thing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you'll talk in just a second. Uh, this is a piece of metal. And tonight we have a punk rock band with us called Raise the Stakes. And you're probably wondering, why do you have a punk band on? Because this is a metal station. Well, I will tell you why. It's because there are a lot of similarities between both genres. And they're also influenced by each other. And believe it or not, they actually do covers of each other's stuff. And that doesn't mean that like punk rock musicians don't listen to metal too. So, um, how about you guys all introduce yourselves? Hi, Kyle. You're first. Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Eddie. And what do you do in the band? I'm the bassist. And I'm the guitarist and vocalist. And I'm Rob Roman, and I'm the manager. <laughs> Which is funny because you've been on this show before. Yes, I have. You were in I used to play Orinaco. bass in Orinoco. You got it right. right. See? I was listening to you. <laughs> Foreign taco. Foreign taco. Foreign taco. So you guys are punk rock music. How does that feel to be on a metal station right now? Interesting. Very interesting. Get closer to it. Very interesting. Is that closer, better? Big boy. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hey a little now. too close for comfort here, guys. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to start off by asking you guys um, to start the conversation. What is the difference between uh, the music that you guys play and metal musicians? Uh, pretty much the main difference between the punk rock we play and the metal musicians is that our music is pretty much straightforward, fast-paced power chords over sweeps and tapping and solos. That's basically it. So then how is punk influenced by metal or how has the genre influenced each other? Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, pretty much it's the fact of that uh, thrash metal pretty much came out of speed punk or fast pace. So you look at like the casualties, which you have the hardcore punk rock mixed with a uh, vocalist from what would be a uh, modern day me metal band. So how did you guys end up starting? Long story about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting shoved by a blue ball. and It's only a one. <laughs> wow. Hey, Eddie's got a whole story on his music career. We're going way back to high school. Either you can start with like <laughs> Raise the Stakes or you can go all the way back to then. Okay. I I'm not going that far back. Wait a minute. No you're bad you're the manager. Do you write his lines too? No, but he says I'm just a part of, a, of the band as everyone else. Pump it up my Makes bag. me feel special. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll ask manager questions in a minute. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. All right. How about how about we let uh Fuck. What's your name? <laughs> Eddie. Eddie. Okay. Let, let Eddie talk, and then Kyle, and then and then Rob. <laughs> uh, pretty much how the band started is that uh, Kyle and I were talking about starting a band, so we found a drummer who recently actually left the band. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he decided to leave because he was taking drum lessons and felt that because he was taking lessons, he was better than the band instead of being self-taught. But anyway, uh, we started a band. We brought another guitarist. Guitarist wanted to get rid of Kyle, so Kyle was ousted. Uh, played a show at Portage Theater. We got rid of that guitarist, and we all talked together about starting the band up again, and here we are. 
Yeah. Just you two? Uh, no, actually, a big big, big announcement time. <laughs> Actually, the big announcement is that we actually did find a drummer randomly, what, last Thursday? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, wow. le- we, we went to Guitar Center. Yeah, we went to Guitar Center because Rob was looking at stuff, and there was a drummer playing, and we had our friend Alexis go up and talk to him and bring him over. And we jam- I ended up jamming with him Saturday, and he can hold his own for only playing since, uh, what, June? June? Yeah. yeah, he can hold his own. I still say she. Uh, you moved in. Oh, I still say Alexis flashed him. Same with you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. Let's check the um, Try now. Hello? No, that oh. one's screwed up. Damn right. it! <laughs> hey, this one's working. Yeah, that I, one can, I can hear myself think. Oh, no. Okay. Well, now now yeah. you can uh, stop playing with your blue ball. And yes. uh, blue ball. I can talk into this microphone just fine. Blue ball. So, how old are you guys? 21. And I'm 20, I'll be 21 the end of this month. And how about this new drummer of yours? 18. Hold up. Need some help over there? No. Okay, I am good and ready to roll. So how did you guys end up meeting up with Rob to be your manager? He's in a metal, he was in a metal <laughs> band. How'd that work? Actually, I met Rob on the short bus back in middle school. <laughs> you guys must have been very special. They were. Wait, we no, still oh, not, are. Okay, not worse, still are. You don't show it right now. Um, there's not a camera here. Give him a five-hour energy. <laughs> no, you're giving him a camera. A camera and a beer. But no, uh, pretty much I met Rob back in middle school. You know, we talked on the bus and whatnot, but I didn't really start hanging out with him until about a year ago. And, you know, we talk about music and whatnot, and we just hang out. So how does he help your band per se, like get shows and... He got us here. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, would you like to take that one? Oh, lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, um, what made them want to be my, what made them want me to be their manager at first was when I first told Eddie, he recently moved back from Wisconsin. Thank and I, to- I told him about a show and I was like, and I was like, you might want to come down here and get a band going or something because there's a show that I got for you that I, I can get you a slot on. And so I told him about the show, and so he, yeah. Here they are, Basically. And ready they got to the band be going everything. superstars. <laughs> the show that I got them is uh, October 23rd, I think it is. Yeah. yeah, you need to announce this, because this is pretty badass for you guys. Yeah. Like, October 23rd, uh, these guys, Raise It Six, will be opening for the Misfits. Which, that, speaking of which, is also, like, crossover. They're they're yeah. heavy for being punk. And Danzig, especially, like, solo, yeah. is more metal than he is punk. Yeah. I don't think Danzig's playing at that show with them. No, I know he's, he's not. He's doing the Congress Theater one, but... Yeah. A Jerry it's Danzig only's be and this Legacy. One. Mm-hmm. But so how do you guys feel about that? Like, are you are you guys on a pretty good slot with them? Uh, I'm excited about it. I mean, uh, the first song I ever learned on guitar was actually Scream by Misfits, and granted... That's a good song. It's Michael Graves' vocals, but... I like Michael you know. Graves as a vocalist. I really yeah. do. That and uh, Jerry, mm-hmm. he's good too. I saw Jerry live actually two years ago at uh, Clearwater. He like rubbed my hair and it was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you guys have been a band for how long now? Um, um, do you want us the truth or the lie? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on a station where you can say anything you want. So, so I'm going to lie to you. Okay. If we go, er, if we go back, they've to been together since 1986. Go! <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's no. the lie. 1408. If, if we go <laughs> back to like four undercover kids, uh, December after the hiatus and whatnot, pretty much only about maybe a month or two. Okay, yeah. so you guys, how many shows have you ended up playing before this big show? One. Oh, <laughs> shit. None. Are you prepared for this? I mean, you're opening up for a really big name. I've played a lot of shows in the past and whatnot. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? And I've been in a band with Rob, and I've, that's basically it. Was it Orinaco? Yeah. No, no, it was uh, in, in, 2000, Taco. in 2008 when I was in the melodic death metal band Exorcism. He played bass for them. Interesting. Yep. So your writing process, how does that work? Between you guys or your other members that aren't here? How many are in your band? Three. Three? Only three. Okay. So who's the main lyricist? Me. Okay. You need you need to say who you are because I'm sure people listening they can't, can't see, see you raise you, your Eddie. hand. Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Eddie. the main lyricist, writer. It's Eddie for all you people out there. You don't know me. And if you do know me, hi. 
His balls just dropped. <laughs> That's the effect. Everybody of blue else balls, hear people? that? That's the effect of blue. Balls. I heard that. I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> um, I had to take it out. That was the plop. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What about you, Kyle? What we were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Your songs and how you form them. So after like the writing lyrics is done, what do you guys usually record first? He sends me the guitar, and I just put the bass to it. Just. And if I fuck up, he doesn't. <laughs> as bad as that is to or say. Me as I was doing today. Yeah, or Rob will help. You were it's pretty much what we'll do is I'll come up with an idea or someone will throw out an idea and we'll just work with it from there. Uh, Lyric-wise, if I get a random idea for lyrics, I'll just write it down. And if I don't like it, I'll rip it out of the notebook and throw it away. Yeah, I know how that goes. Yep. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Then when you guys are like done with the song... Do you guys end up like practicing it a whole bunch before the show, or do you just constantly listen to it on your iPod? Uh, most of the time, we'll end up be practicing the song before we even go into working on recording with it. Uh, lately, though, without the drummer, we've been trying to work on our own material, recording whatever we could to help the new drummer out. Is it hard to be a three-piece? Not at all, really. I mean, <clears throat> some aspects it is, because um, when it comes to originality and whatnot... You have to actually challenge your mind and think of things. But other than that, it's actually not all that bad. I mean, it's a lot less stress because you don't have to worry about everybody being at practice. You know. You're making a blue ball snowman over there? If it was wet, it could be the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> <laughs> but blue. Um, you guys recording, we're going to hear later on. How many songs do you have on that EP? Uh, the EP right now, how many are we up to or working on? Well, we've got one fully done. Yeah. And I know we've got three others we're working on. Yeah. It's I don't, I don't know if it would be an official EP, though. It's just like songs just for online. It's called, yeah. it's, you know, it's called, it's called a clusterfuck. Because <laughs> it's, it's done to a drum machine. As of right now, it is, yeah. Depending no on how it's recording, drum machines actually aren't that bad. Yeah. Because who I'm recording with right now, he uses a drum machine. And because it's just right now... Uh, me and this other vocalist, and he's been doing the guitar parts that we needed a drum machine. And the drum machine is playing faster than anybody alive, so yeah. <laughs> we can't exactly get a drummer that can play like that fast right now. So, I mean, it works. If Who's going to really tell, honestly, if they listen to your stuff unless they're like a real musician? I mean, if it sounds good, it sounds good. Yeah, exactly. You know, right now it's just a matter of trying to help uh, our drummer work out and learn everything because the show's in a matter of a month and a half, you know. How are you guys preparing for that? Why did you leave? Trying to get as much practice time in as possible. Are there nerves? I'm not nervous. Nope. No? no. He about, might be. What about your drummer for only playing, like, what is he on, three months now? Yeah. He's on three months now, and pretty much we were in Guitar Center and... We didn't think we'd actually find a drummer there that day because, Rob, you were going to look at a keyboard to hook yeah, up to the computer. Yeah. And, you know, we're all just standing there waiting to leave, and then we hear someone playing the drums. And I was actually playing with uh, an Epiphone Les Paul just for fun. And literally, I stopped and just listened to the kid. And I'm like, okay. Found Kyle, talked to him. Found Rob, talked to him. Well, I had to wipe the drill from your mouth first. Yeah, we were arguing. <laughs> o we, w we actually argued who was going to go talk to him about being in the band. Damn. At which Man point, crush. At which point, uh, our friend Alexis was there, and she told me to hold her acoustic guitar and Kyle to hold her bag, and she went up and got him. She flashed him. <laughs> how, how do you know that? Like, yeah, Kyle, you know? how do you know that? I don't. I just want to piss her off. He just wants to see boobies. <laughs> She's probably listening right I can now. Just lift my oh, shirt up for shit. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So what are your influences as your three pits? Are we talking like Green Day, Blink-182, Offspring, pop punk era? Or are we talking like exploited, casualties, leftover crack, trash talk? Uh, one of the biggest influences I'll listen to is Bad Religion. I fucking love their lyrics. <laughs> Seeing them live. I'm not kidding you. Like, Greg just has this way of getting that audience involved. I can never get bored of them. Exactly. Awesome lyricist, amazing, amazing, bad religion, holy shit. <laughs> Who else? Uh, Kyle? Are you going to go main influence or what started? Yeah, influence. Well, the band that actually had me pick up a bass was Green Day, to be completely honest, from okay. the Dookie era. 
you know, best so they're, case. So they're earlier stuff. Well, yeah. Well, that's not bad, you know. I mean, um, I guess one of the other biggest influences is uh, Face to Face. Yeah, yeah Face to Face is pretty badass, too. I saw them before. They're awesome. Live. I wish I had seen them. <laughs> you need to go to Warp Tour you, last you year. That's put, where it was at. You should have put that on the iPod. Oh, I should have, shouldn't I? I should have oh, brought well. my iPod. They're on there. Eddie. Oh, they do a cover of them. Eddie, fail. You yeah. do a cover face to face? We do a cover of Disconnected. Wow. You should have put that on your iPod. You're going to have to email it to me, and I'm going to have to play it later on the show. Okay. Because I really want to hear this. Sounds about right. All I'm going to warn you is the vocals are really crappy. Well, I'm not <laughs> looking rough. for perfection. I'm looking for music. All right. That okay. works, then. Cool. Works. So That's why we like a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Amir is shitty as hell. I'm not that, going to lie. Li- that's why we don't listen to them, them for music. We listen to them just to like drink beer and just like the last make up our own lyrics. The last time we listened to him, yeah, we made up our own lyrics. <laughs> that was so great. Wasn't he the one that gave us the, li- the idea for what we said? That one line? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Back to Eddie. So <laughs> I wanna, whoa. What anyway. were you going to say there? I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> I wanted to, being a metal show, I wanted to ask a few questions as to what you guys have noticed within the scene of like punk versus metal. Like, what are the similarities that you guys have noticed, and what are the differences that you've noticed? Um, one of the things I've noticed in regards to the punk scene is that a lot of it's dying off. You know, a lot of people just don't seem to understand it anymore. They do it more for show. Uh, in regards to metal, again, it seems like it's dying off because a lot of stuff you'll hear in regards to both genres, is that a lot of it you've already heard before. Right. It's running out of new, exciting ideas. Well, it's because, like, a lot of the people, they're either, like, listening to the old stuff, trying to be, like, the old genre, or they're trying to be whatever's new and mixing it with something that's already been heard. Exactly. And I I see it, too, that, like, it, it's obviously dying off because... I mean, Chicago scene, it's okay, but, I mean, you go to a lot of local shows, there's a handful of people. There's, it's not a full house anymore. I don't know if people can't afford it or it's too much of a hassle, whatever. But, I mean, I think it's harder for punk I because a lot of people listen to metal, but I haven't seen that many punk rock bands emerge in a while even for shows. Oh, we need the Thirsty Whale again. The Thirsty Whale. Why the fuck do you bring up the Thirsty Whale? Because Waking Chaos was talking about this, this last week, and I was like, what the fuck is a Thirsty Whale? Yeah, thank you. What is a Thirsty Whale? It's an old venue that used to be in the area. Like, in the 90s, they used to have so many good metal shows. That was, like, the place to be every Rob, weekend for shows. Rob, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 21. How do you know about the Thirsty Whale? Because when I was in Orinoco, our singer Dave, he's in his 30s, he used to go there all the time. Well, there you go. So you say that, but you've never been, so you don't know how it is. You might hate it. By stories... Wait a minute. Uh, that dude was 30? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? He was the baby in the band. You didn't know this? <laughs> well, we knew I, Rob was the baby in the band, but we thought it was more so... Nope. Like, you know. I tend not to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I find it easier to work with people that are closer in your age group. Mm-hmm. So I've learned. Because, like, the, the older well, people get... Well, how long that lasted me. <laughs> <laughs> how long did you last in that band? I joined in April, and then... Three, four months? <laughs> like... The, it came to an end in August. Yeah. That's sad. I remember that email. I wanted to cry for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a quick but question. But no, you're, you're oh. what? What's Is the question? if I give a shout out to my little brother so he stops texting me? Yeah. No, do as many shout outs as you want. Say as much shit as you want because you know what? You have an hour and a half here and I'm trying to kill time. <laughs> okay. DJ, I know your mom and Steve are listening up in Tomahawk. Here's your shout out. Hello, hello, family. How are you? Haven't heard from you in like two weeks. Hi, hi, DJ. <laughs> anyway, hi, DJ. Everyone says hi down here. Okay, I'm so confused. Your family lives in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, right? Uh, my mom and my stepdad, and my little brother DJ. Where do, do you live? Uh, right now, Joliet. With right, right uh, now, a box under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, box under the bridge, in Joliet. <laughs> Uh, no, pretty much right now I'm just bouncing around from his house, his house, or my buddy Anthony's. Okay. Just, just for the music? Um. You don't have to go into personal reasons, but I'm just. <laughs> yeah. About <laughs> that. <laughs> anyway, uh. You're not going any further with that one. No, it's more so like I took a vacation down here and whatnot. And, and you didn't leave. Pretty much. <laughs> just bouncing, bouncing, he, bouncing. He, he's become an eyesore on us all. 
How Ouch. Far, how far is Tomahawk from here? I've never even About heard of it. About six hours. Six hours from Joliet. What the fuck? Who did you know down in Joliet to go visit for a vacation? My, You're from here. Yeah, I'm from Joliet. Oh, my God. My dad, my brother Cody, my uh, half-sister Riley, and then my stepmom. Wow. Yeah. And all of us. Yeah, and all of these guys. And all guys. you guys. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys actually came on the show tonight because I wanted a band that would be different because I, I wanted to discuss more of like metal versus punk and everything else that involves it. Um, another thing that I've noticed about metal versus punk is at the concerts, mosh pits are definitely different. The people that show up to the shows definitely different. Like, don't get me wrong, in both genres you get a lot of people with the studs and the gauntlets, well, not gauntlets, but like spikes and shit and the belts, but in a punk scene you got mostly circle pits. They're not really... Are they mosh pits ever? Um... Actually, when I went to Warp Tour 2009, uh, I remember during Bad Religion at one point, they had a circle pit going, and then oh, they ha- yes. and then I they remember. had. Um, I know during one song, I can't remember what it was. There was a regular mosh pit. Anti Flag had a mosh pit going on. Yes. You know, it just all depends on the vibe the song's giving off, really. Whereas now it's in metal, hardcore dancing or the Wall of Death. Or something. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you know what? Those are the I, dumbest I, things ever. The Wall of Death is cool, but like, I'm, like, I'm just I used to seeing Lamb okay. of God do it. That's okay. I don't mind. When Lamb of God does it, that's fucking chaotic. When I saw, I, when um, me and Kyle once saw Kill Switch Engage with Lamb of God back in no, 2007. I, no, I was there too. You, no. know, you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, I know where I'm going. <laughs> the Wall no, of Life? We are no longer doing the Wall of Death. It is now called the Wall, the wall of Life. Yeah. Run into Adam, each other and hug. Adam fucking D, I am in love with you. If you're listening, you need to call me. I'm going to marry you <laughs> one day. Holy shit. He's amazing. Believe it or not, that concert I was just talking about was actually my first metal concert. Was Kill Switch? Kill Switch, Lamb of God, what was it? Devil Driver, Devil Driver and Soilwork. Soil work. That was the best fucking show I've... My first metal show was Morbid Angel and Behemoth. Well, Lottie He has up. no idea who that is. He's a Probably punk rocker. Not. I know who it is. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, he hangs out with me. You need to take that blue ball off the microphone because I can't hear you anymore. Fine. That's because he doesn't have it in his face. <laughs> no, he did. He just didn't want to open his mouth. Ah. Uh, I can hear that's you That's what now. she said. Cat goes where? <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, I think the only metal show I've actually been to was Mayhem last year. Mayhem last year was awesome because Rob Zombie. Yeah. Five feet away I, from I us. Didn't go this w- I didn't go this year. It was Okay. It was okay. I thought about it that day, but I was like, <laughs> it was me and my friend Cody. He's like, you want to go to Mayhem? I'm like, are you, you serious? You know who fucking stole that show was Unearth. Yeah? Unearth was unbefucking. That was one of the few bands I wanted to see that night. I wanted to see them all I, I told this story, Silence. and I'll tell it again tonight because okay. of the people not listening. Okay, so I went with my brother and our friend Anna and his friend Zach, and um, Unearth, I... I wanted to see forever. I, I never got a chance. Well, I did. I saw him once. I saw him open with Demu. Um, but Unearth, like, their new CD had come out, and they were awesome. You know, Ken is doing beer chugging things on stage, and how they ended up on top of the Jaeger bus, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> but they ended up up there. So then afterwards, you know, I go to Mayhem to, like, meet the bands more than I do to watch them, because I've probably already seen them already. Yeah. So I'm, like, first in line pretty much to meet on Earth, and I'm, like, waiting there for 45 minutes. And uh, everybody else joins up with me later, and we go up to meet him. And, and Ken had drawn this Sharpie dick on his arm. <laughs> that I, I, guess, I guess he was drawing a different one every single day of the show. Um, so I go up to him, and I'm like, hey, I like your dick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And he goes... I like your dick. <laughs> and so, Man. Man. Then, okay, so my friend Anna is 15, and he sees her. And I'm not going to lie, she's she's good looking. I, hot's the wrong word to be telling on the radio, but <laughs> she's really good looking. Hi, Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But anyway. Be <laughs> um, so Ken sees her, and he goes, marry me. <laughs> and she goes, well, I'm not legal. And he's just like, he stops whatever he's doing. He's just like, how old are you? Because she's taller than me. She's like 5'7". Really? So wow. she's taller like, I'm 15. And he's like, oh, my God. He's I have like, to go over here call now. me. Call me <laughs> when you turn 18. And so then, like, we move further down the line. And Justin from Killswitch is drumming for them. And uh, she's talking with him, going, oh, my God, I've never seen Killswitch before or whatever. 
And he's like, oh, where have you been? And Ken just bursts in between their conversation going, dude, don't fucking talk to her. She's mine. <laughs> he's like, awesome. she's not even 18 yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Wow. Sounds like hipster pedal bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was awesome. I was like dying laughing. Some of the nicest guys, you know, obviously Kill Switch was awesome to me. Yeah. All That Remains has been awesome to me. But on earth fucking stole that show and you know who was also really good on that show godsmack really yes godsmack did like a eight minute drum solo thing but two drum kits sully played one yeah and they were Damn. having a drum off and it was fucking awesome like their cds hard rack obviously but when they played live somehow they end up seeming really heavier so they were awesome. Disturbed played the same set list that they did when they were on Uproar last year. Yeah. I left. <laughs> Sadly, they're on a hiatus now. No, no. The, they, they, they pretty much disbanded. Oh, they disbanded now? They say they are on hiatus, but David has said that supposedly um, that they're all going to start side projects, but it's highly unlikely right yeah. now that they're going to get back together. That's what I've read. Whether or not he holds true to that, when he wants his money, he'll probably come back like Trent Reznor will. <laughs> yeah. But when uh, money calls, you know. So I want to I want to hear more from Rob though as to your managing position. Like, are you looking for other bands to manage? Are you looking to just do these guys and helping them out? What's the plan now? Well, right now I just started helping them out because with every band I've been in, I've always ended up managing them, like booking all the shows and everything. And I don't have a band right now, so I got them the show, and I was like, why don't I just manage you guys? And, and he's like, all right. Do you have, like, a magic wand that you went, misfits? <laughs> I like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have to do? Did you have to, like, suck a dick or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> Bullshit. No, I didn't, actually. No. I just talked to a guy. I was like, hey, I got a punk band in the show. I talked to a guy. <laughs> Not no way. No, I seriously, I seriously went into the story. Joking aside, like, how, how did you manage this? Because I know a lot of people... That come on the show either like hooked up with Jan X, Jan X, Jan X. Yeah, she's cool. Jan X or um, what's the other one that's doing? Chicago Women of Metal. Chicago Women of Metal or there's that other one. Um, Reverb? No, not Reverb. Red Star Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. That's been doing booking too for a lot of people. Well, um, the promoter that's doing this Misfit show is the same one that booked uh, Orinoco on the Molotov Solution show that's coming up in October, but I, I'm not even sure if they're even playing it because. I I I'm still nabbing on the Facebook. They haven't taken me off of it. There has there has been no updates or nothing. They missed you. I don't know. I don't Liars. really. I don't really mm -hmm. talk to any of them no more. And um, but I talked to the guy who's um this promoter. He booked Orinaco on a show, and I saw that he was doing the Misfit show. And I was like, hey, I got a punk band interested. He's like, all right, send me their link. So I sent it. I um sent him the link, and then he messaged them. He's like, hey, I got a show for you guys. And it'd be Misfits. Did yep. you know it was Misfits? Yeah. And then I was having a really bad day, and Rob messaged me on Facebook. Hey, I got something that'll brighten your day. What's that? Misfits are playing October 23rd at Mojo's. Okay. You guys could open for them. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, though, for, like, second gig. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Do you want to pursue managing other bands? I've actually started thinking about it because I'm, I'm so good at it that every band I get into, I manage it so good that people get mad at me. <laughs> But you know what? It's nice to have somebody of your own to be managing your band that yeah. knows what you're doing. Because yeah. I, I don't know anything about the booking companies that have been doing this stuff for people. Like, I I can't say anything bad about them. But, like, even when I was in a one band, I got, like, three of the four shows we played. Like, yeah. just because I knew people. You know, and that's just the way to do it. I like self-managing, but, you know, if you've got that friend that can help you, more power to you. Yeah, I was talking to my friends in the Pond Burning Body. They were in town a few weeks ago. Why didn't you fucking invite me? You <laughs> told me these stories when Orinoco was on here. I was looking for people to go with the show. Hello! I posted on Facebook like five times. Who wants to go see a Pond Burning Body with me? I didn't see this post. Oh, wait. Were you talking about the last time they were just here or when you partied with them? He's talking about... I partied with them both times. Oh. He's probably talking about when... they when just played Mojo's? No, uh, they played Penny Road Pub a few weeks ago. I thought they just played Mojo's, too. They played Mojo's in, back in May. That's when they stayed at my house. I was going to say, he's probably talking about the day where the next day we saw him, he was wearing a white shirt. Yeah. And we were like, uh, what? That don't see Yeah, I was, I was talking to them about it, and they had their, their friend who's, all, who's like their tour manager. They told me, like, yeah, it's cool to have someone in the band manage the band, but then if you have, like, someone who's not part of the band, 
managing you guys. That way, when you have a bad show, he can go up and talk to them in a professional way and not get all pissed off. Because, like, if you're managing your own band and you try to talk to a promoter who's screwing you over, because it's your music, you there's a lot of emotion there. So you, you might get pissed off and say the wrong thing and not get invited back. But right. if you have someone on the outside go and talk, and they can talk in professional matter and they can actually settle it and everything. Agreed. Agreed. See, I've been on that end of the stick many times before with... Uh, I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, with uh, the guy who was running JT Music for a while. Guys, uh, Rob, didn't we have a problem with the dude from JT Music? John Teeter? Ha ha ha! John Teeter! <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear this. Well, the uh, best... Uh, I, I, uh, I got some... Uh, Cody just texted me. Oh, I, Who's no. this person? Hey, uh, Cody, the game. <laughs> that's, like, that's what he said. Oh, he fuck said, you. He said, Cody Graves. It's from, it's from my, my friend Cody. He's like, the game. You better read this a lot and make everyone lose on the air. Love, Cody. <laughs> so the game is pretty much you are always playing it, but if you think about the game, you lose. Well, so. that's retarded. It's fun, though. It's, the the point's game? Not to, you never win. You just do a little better each time. The point's not to win. The point's to make everyone else around you lose. Is it sad that DJ just texted me saying to mention the game? Really? <laughs> Oh my god, your friends suck. <laughs> what is with this game? Like, I'm playing this radio station right now, and it sucks, because I'm terrible right now, and next week it'll be better if I don't think about it. Is that pretty much what he's trying to tell me? No. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we're always playing the game. <laughs> what game? <laughs> Damn you. Sorry, Dustin. Dustin, <laughs> <laughs> I am so fucking confused right. right now. All right. We're going to figure this out right if now. You, if, if anyone listening, if you all lost the game, message me, Kyle, or Rob. I want to know how many of you lost. Yeah. Is this a show? The game? No. The game? It's a game. <laughs> Hi, Triple H. All right. Think about <laughs> it. Oh, my God. All right. I'm we're... going to play a game right now, listeners, and you can play along, too. <laughs> we're always playing. So how the... can I join? You are you're, you're already, already in. What? <laughs> That's mind-blowing. You're already in, but you already lost. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I mentioned the game? Because you thought about it. Pretty much, the game doesn't... Now it resets for another 20 minutes. Usually by then you'll forget about it. But if you something reminds you of the game, like for us, we'll send a text to each other that says Triple H. He goes by the game. What? We lose. Whose number is that? That's a 715 number. Isn't so that Tomahawk? That's a Tomahawk number. DJ? All right. So we're always playing the game, and the only way to win is to not think about it. Oh. But as soon as you think about it, you lose. So how about we not think about the game when we play some of this music that you guys have recorded? How's that All sound? Right. All you right. guys want to Sounds play some well. music? How about you uh, introduce your little album thingy and uh, tell me what it's about? How's I'll that find going? our one song. <laughs> yeah. That you just recorded? What is this called? My sister just texted me and said she lost. <laughs> um, Kyle, you're going to have to grab it. Closer. Closer. Grab it. Yeah, You're yeah, looking yeah. for the song. W- which one? There's only one song by us on there. Oh, well, let me look. Oh, it's your mom. Yes, yeah, it's my mom. <laughs> it's my mom texted your me mom is lost. the song that you're going no. to play? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Right, Next single. I need to play this. So set this up for me. What is this song titled? Uh, the song's called Man Up. Man Up. Mm-hmm. And uh, pretty much I wrote this last year when there was some event that went on. And uh, needless to say, this guy did some things that shouldn't have been done. And, yeah, it's pretty much me telling him I'm going to kill him. All right, well, (laughs) you have heard it here first. Raise Your Stakes is going to be playing their debut song that they recorded today called Man Up. Let's take a listen. Click it. To settle, score leading up to now Let it all fall down There's sure's no time for redemption And that's out of the question Right about now You figured out Man up, you living bitch Man up, to watch you dead So tired of 
of your shit It's time to take your licks Man up, you little bitch Man up, to watch you dead So tired of your shit It's time to take your licks So now you've come and realized You've missed your only chance to say goodbye But now The truth is out there's just no time for redemption And that's out of the question Right about now You have figured out Man up you little bitch Man up to watch you dead So tired of your shit It's time to take your licks Man up you little bitch Man up to watch you dead So tired of your shit It's time to take your licks And we are back with a piece of metal, and I am your host for tonight, Morgan Danielle, and I am sitting here with punk rockers, Raise the Stakes, and we just heard your song, Man Up, right? Yep, a few tracks back. A few tracks back, the first song that we heard before the break. Describe to me what it was like recording that song after, like, you told me what it was influenced by. Like, was there an anger, rage-type feeling, or... Um... When I was play- when I was recording the guitar guitar track, I was actually kind of afraid I might snap my strings. But do you uh, record vocals and guitar at the same time? No, oh. I do it separately. Vocals are the last things I do. Um, but vocally, I just wanted to make sure that I put enough emotion into it because the first time I did it way back when, I sounded very wimpy, and Rob can attest for that one. Like somebody was punching yep. you in the testicles. Yeah, <laughs> still sounds like that. Ouch. Well, that's what punk rock is. I mean, have you heard Green Day and Blink-182? As much as I love them, I mean, they need to grow balls. <laughs> <laughs> you mad, Eddie? I'm not mad. Why would I be mad? Why are you mad? But no, I, I have to say, uh, like, pop punk is probably one of my favorites. I As lame as it can get sometimes, like, new Blink-182 sucks. Like, I'm sorry, that Up All Night song is terrible. Yes, it is. I mean, I'm seriously, like, so pissed because they mix, like, Angels and Airwaves into it. Sounds about right. And honestly, when they when I first heard they were reuniting, that was actually a, f- a fear of mine. And well, I saw them on the re- reunited tour, and they were okay. But I wish I had gotten to see them when they were doing the Mark, Tom, and Travis stuff. Right. Um, and Rob's like, what the fuck are you talking about? This ain't metal. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that look, Mr. Hey, Lamb the, of if God. I had atti- if I had that attitude, I wouldn't be managing By them. the way, you have glitter under your eye. How the fuck did that happen, you queer? Oh, pixie queefed. <laughs> do I? Uh, you did. It, you did. I did. Didn't see it in the light. I, I think no I it think was green. It. I just you see the green fairy tonight before we came here? No, I didn't have any absinthe. Yeah, we weren't Damn. drinking absinthe. That's How did you get a hold of absinthe? I thought that stuff was illegal. Oh, we have some in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that you stuff jelly? was illegal. No, they are. Uh, no, they, they re-legal it. They uh, re-legalize it. Re-legal? Really? Is that the same stuff that <laughs> Marilyn Manson is bre- brewing out in... Uh, it's like Switzerland, Sweden, or something. He gets it imported. Maybe. Yeah. Speaking of that, I, I think know it's called Mansith. I'm tempted to try it. Yeah. That sounds really gay. <laughs> <laughs> Mansith. That sounds I as gay as Man Basket. What? Whatever. <laughs> McCormick plays. Oh. Okay, so going back to the song "Man Up." Um, how long did it take you guys to record it? You just said you finished it today, or was it everything done today? Uh, we finalized everything today. Recording-wise, it maybe took a day and a half, two days. And who ends up recording your stuff for you? Actually, we do all of our recording at Rob's house. Yeah. <laughs> Manager and recording engineer. And bartender. And, and bartender. bartender. <laughs> and lodging. You do everything. You're an entrepreneur. That's why my house is a place on Facebook now. You can check in at my house. That's weird, dude. I just got I didn't it. do it. I think Kyle did. What? 
Didn't you make a place to check in on, for people on Facebook in my house? No. I think that was Mandy. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that might have been Mandy. Some chick loved you. No, she, uh, no, she didn't. Oh. <laughs> she just wanted people to invade your space. She's just dumb. Gotcha. Let's hope she ain't listening. I actually, she ain't listening. <laughs> I was say I actually just got a text from my friend about that Mansith thing. Apparently, it's red and it is called Mansith. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Speaking of that, um, there's a beer Bitterman has to get a hold of. Clutch is coming out with a beer. It's New Belgian series. Let Bitterman know that. All right, is he Bitterman. listening? Bitterman's probably not listening. Bitterman. All right. Bitterman would be my godfather. Bitterman. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who is Bitterman? Bitterman is uh, my godfather. Okay. Hi, Bitterman. Uh, who, by the way, if you're listening, is amazing. We need another beer party. I think you guys need to do a shout out to your drummer. Like, you why? haven't even mentioned his name yet. What's why wrong with you? Why is he not here? <laughs> yes, Dustin, absent is legal. Uh, he, is actually was, he was actually going to come with us, but he, he had, had to go to bed. No, <laughs> no, he uh, he actually had a family emergency. There was a death. Oh so. my god! Now I'm now yeah. I feel bad for joking about that. Yeah. It's all we good. Need to lay it on me, Jesus Christ! <laughs> anyway, I'm almost, like almost like that too. Sorry. Our drummer's name is Jesus Carranza, and he's from the Joliet area. Very cool. They mm-hmm. found Jesus. You know what? If you got Jesus on your side to play punk rock, more power to you. He's their new drummer. <laughs> that, that's what I said. Hey, just think. He's got stick holders. What? The holes in his hand. He's got stick holders. Ah. Oh, my God. We're making fun of this kid, and he just had a family you're crisis. Not, you're not making fun of him? No, I'm making fun of Jesus. Oh, God. He, he just pronounces it differently. I like how people keep texting me about this Manson thing or whatever. Drop well, it already. I don't know anything else about it except for Marilyn Manson has something called Mansith out. And if you want it, look it up on the goddamn internet. I am not the answer to all your questions. <laughs> Google well, just, and Wikipedia. And neither, yeah, damn is, it. neither is raise the stakes, okay? They just heard about it from me. So <laughs> fuck off. Is it bad that every time I hear your brand name, I think of steak? Mm, yeah, I need steak. to. Okay, this brings steak. up a good, good question now. Raise the stakes. Where did the name come from? Well, uh, when the band was still going back in... You had a gambling problem. No, actually, <laughs> when the band was uh, still going back in meow. winter, it was actually... Did you just meow? Meow. Meow. You didn't do it quick enough. I, well, I didn't anyway, do something. Meow. When the band was still going back in the wintertime when, you know, it was called Four Undercover Kids, which abbreviates you have fuck. That's and awesome. Was, and to make it better, they were a three-piece. Yeah, after Kyle was... Ousted, not by my choice. But so you go by F U K. Anyway, but rhyme, so it must be true. <laughs> but where All the right. band name came from is that I was actually thinking about changing the band name <laughs> um, after we played the show at Portage Theater and whatnot because there was only three of us. So you know, so I was just throwing around ideas and raise the stakes came into my head mainly because I think I was playing Stop online. Picking po- at it. <laughs> I think I was playing online poker at the time. If it, so if it itches, slap it. I'm not. It doesn't itch. Rob just got a new tattoo. And Stop he's, interrupting Eddie, he's Kyle. He's picking at his ink, and it's really I'm gross. I'm not picking at it, I swear. And Marta, if you're listening, I'm not picking at it. <laughs> Eddie, continue. I'm um, sorry. Rob's being very rude over there. But I said nothing. <laughs> he's picking at it. Pick a winner, buddy. <laughs> No, but I think it was just one of those late nights where I couldn't sleep, so I was playing uh, Texas Hold'em poker on Facebook, and I'm so just you like, "You do have a gambling problem." I do not have a gambling. You problem. You just play with invisible money because you don't want to lose it. <laughs> That's a start to a problem. That is a start. <laughs> you know what? I'm addicted to Sims, and, uh, Sims Social, and Words with Friends. Well, if we're is going this Words with Friends on my iPod, but no one plays with me. I was gonna say, Dude, I was gonna say, if we're gonna go off, do you hook di- that shit up to the internet? Because I will I totally do. play with you. <laughs> All right, I was gonna say, go- if we're going, <laughs> <laughs> if we're going off, on a- if we're going off on addictions, me and Eddie with Pot Farm. Yeah, pot- I've never played this game, and I need to know. I've never she played. Just made Angry us all Birds. lose the games. Huh? Yeah, we all just lost. She the game. just made us lose the game. Who? Oh, oh, God damn it! What? I won? You no, you win. lost. Oh shit! You lost and made all of us lose. And everyone else listening. Wait, why? Because you said the game. Oh, I'm not supposed to. Oh. oh, hey. oh. I think <laughs> I got how to play this now. Oh, and Maybe. I'll, you'll, Maybe. Ca- you'll catch on in a, in a few days on Facebook. <laughs> Probably. I'll have some fun. With it. I have to like post on your wall or something if I understand what's going on at the moment. Apparently, Alexis says ha, 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 ha. Um, Alexis says ha, 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 ha. 
Alexis, if you're listening, ha 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 ha, <laughs> right back at you. Amazing. Um, okay. Anyway, continue your story. In regard, if it's still going. In regards to, I think we were talking about pot farm. Oh. It's pretty much like Farmville, except you don't have to worry about your crops dying. Oh, because they just grow and then you smoke them. Uh, I wish. <laughs> yeah, you. I think you just sell them. That. Sadly. Dime bags and shit announces. I know how this stuff works. <laughs> Anyways, so your guys, <laughs> your guys' song was pretty awesome, I have to say. Um, I could hear a lot of influence of, like, the older stuff, which is awesome, because I love Face to Face and Bad Religion and all those other guys. Like, Leftover Crack, I've seen those guys live. They are badass. Uh, Misfits, I've seen. They're pretty cool, too. But... Anyway, so tell me more about your band and where do you guys see yourself going after, like, this show that you have with the Misfits? Hopefully it puts our foot in the door. Which I'm sure it will, (coughs) but, like, do you guys have a plan as to, like, obviously Rob's going to be booking your shows or whatever, but, I mean, is there a goal in mind? Are you just playing to play, or do you want yourselves signed to a label, touring, doing, like, Warp Tour eventually one day? Well... When it comes to, like, music and whatnot, I've always, you know, I've liked the idea of touring, but I don't ever want to have to worry about someone coming in and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to change this about you and whatnot. If it comes to it, I'd rather just stay underground. Um, as for where, you know, I'm thinking things will go after the show, if anything, it could probably just be a learning experience, you know. <clears throat> and this band's just going to keep growing and improving and... You know, wherever it leads, that's where it leads. Is there... How do you keep the band underground? Like, I'm confused. Like, I know that there's a scene still for underground. But, I mean, with you saying that you want to see yourselves grow and grow, I mean, won't you eventually make it above ground? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> above sea level. <laughs> <laughs> let's, um... Let's see what would be a good example. Let's take, um... You could either take Casualties or Misfits. Misfits have been around since, I believe, the mid mid to late 70s. Yeah. And they really didn't get, like, well-known until probably about the 90s when they came out with a video for American Psycho. And or, now they kind of have, like, a cult following. Exactly. Okay. You know, I think they did get a lot of help from Metallica, though, too. And Metallica covering yeah, with their the stuff probably helped, too. Garage Inc., yeah. Um, but, or if you want to look at the Casualties... They've got a huge following, but they've been around so long, but they're still able to do the music that they enjoy doing. No one's come in and told them, you have to change your tone, you have to give up the hard vocals. Well, part of it is their awesome record label, Mm -hmm. which I'm trying to remember for the life of me right now who they're signed on to. Uh, Side One Dummy. Yeah, Side One Dummy is fucking... Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, (laughs) Fucking awesome for bands. Like, I, I love the bands that they end up producing. Mm-hmm. They're awesome, but do you guys do you guys want a label? Do you want to just produce your own stuff from and find a way to distribute it on your own? Um, probably as time goes by, you know, getting on a label would probably be a good idea and whatnot. Um, but in regards to see if we're gonna look for a label, we don't want to look for one that's going to just you know push us out there and try and make people like us. We'd rather people like us for what we do what we enjoy doing. So have you thought about the idea of putting yourselves into AP Magazine or... Because you know you can put your picture in there and a brief bio and, you know, where you're from and sounds like so-and-so and people can look you up. Actually, that idea had never crossed my mind. Rob, why didn't it cross your mind? We're still we're still just barely putting our feet in the water. We still got to talk to Zeus about everything and how he feels we should go about everything before True. we make a... Because we, we all want to sit down and talk about everything so we can have a plan. Mm-hmm. No, I know. I, I'm just saying that there, there's ways... I think something funny just happened. <laughs> you should share. It's it's not it's not anything to do with the show. It's just funny. Like, my, my bandmate plays softball. <laughs> and <What>? he's... <laughs> he's like that type of guy where everything he says has to be like foul. Like he needs to say cunt and he needs to say like nigger. <laughs> and so like <laughs> Kyle, he, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle we were telling you to Kyle we were telling you to watch that tonight 
Okay, but anyway. I can't um, do it. Adrian's listening. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you damn Blasian. Anyway. Okay, I had to. Uh, Oh, hold on. Fuck. I'm trying to get him. Sorry to that we keep going off topic. We have terrible attention spans. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm, I'm kind of thinking. I, I've never interviewed a punk rock band. This is new to me, so I'm trying to think of things to ask you. Um, no, but my friend, he plays softball, and I, t- I tend to make dirty jokes with him just because like he's that type of person that it doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> So I was man, like, man. I'm going to show up at your softball game tomorrow. And he's like, well, is that a threat? And I was like, um, no, I'm going to support and to laugh at your balls. <laughs> 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 and and he, he just texted back going, okay, but no laughing at my balls. <laughs> I'm just laughing hysterically because I thought the whole thing was funny. But I don't know. I think bald, bald jokes are funny. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So what game are you playing on your phone right now? It has been 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. People keep texting Ah, me. damn it. <laughs> I just no, understood no, this no. now. No. Well, wait, doesn't no, it, it hasn't been 20 minutes. No, wait, but doesn't it count since she forgot? I am no, it so hasn't been 20 fucking minutes. stupid. <laughs> well, wait, she forgot, so shouldn't it count? No, but it has to, the rule is it has to, another 20 minutes has to go by for it to restart. Fuck the rules. No, that's the rules. Man, don't kick me out. I just started playing. You're always playing. You're never out. I just didn't didn't know until now. No, I was every, every I was time a- every time you lose, another game doesn't start for twenty minutes. So you can't be like, "Fuck, I lost a game." Fuck, I lost again. Oh shit, I just lost again. So it's got. Okay, so you somebody's lose got once, time twenty minutes, and I can't say game. You, you got to lose uh, every. Well, every time you say it, the twenty minutes starts over. That's retarded. So we have who created this? I don't know. I'd it, like to know. I think it dates back to the sixties. Are you kidding me? Like, I've never heard of this until now. Go to knowyourmimi.com and search the game. Know your <laughs> Mimi? Yeah. What's a Mimi? Pedo bear. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, here we go. Anyway. Rob's anyway. Diet, Rob. So I want to know, Rob, Yo. as a, Yo. right now, manager of a punk rock band, how do you expect to get them shows? Besides the Misfits, how do you expect to find other bands playing close to the same genre in order to get to them to play. Same, w- same way I do with my other bands. Just not talk to metal bands. Talk to punk bands instead. How many punk bands do you guys know of to play with? Any? Not that much, but I've If you know any, shout them out because I need to look them up. Because I just recently started, started uh, what about Ryan's Hope? Ryan's Hope, yeah. That I, would be a fun show to play. That would be if, amazing. If any of you guys are listening, we're down to play a show with you guys. Who's Ryan's Hope? They the are be- the best local band to ever come out of Joliet. Yeah, at least in my opinion, best punk band to come out of Joliet. Oh, but I, I recently started looking up on Facebook, like more into the punk scene and everything. I found this group called Chicago Punk Bands. There's like 884 members, and I sent a request to join and everything to promote them and try to find shows and everything. That's awesome. Um, so. Another punk band from Joliet. I don't know if you're s- actually. I'm pretty sure you're still playing shows. Um, the Antics. I don't know if they're listening at all. I haven't talked to any of them in a while. But, you know, they're, they're out there. You just have to look for them. Have you guys always been interested in this genre of music? Like, what started you into punk? When I first started being in bands in my sophomore year, it went from alternative to screamo to metal. And then, you know, punk rock just felt right to me. And then last year I started playing my guitar and singing, and that's where I've just stuck. You need to speak up. I can't hear you over there in the corner. I just said one thing, and I'm, like, not the important person. I got yelled at earlier for talking. Well, you were interrupting. Shut up, by Rob. By itching your goddamn tattoo. That was, it was before that, and I wasn't itching it. Oh, I don't remember I'm what I yelled at it. you for again. You're Whatever. <laughs> it's not a dog. What about you, Kyle? I got into punk because of the Tony Hawk's, the Tony Hawk games, actually. Really? Yeah. That's basically. how I got, like, started in the, like, Power Man 5000. Yeah. And drop yeah. Kick yeah. Talk yeah. into the mic, Kyle. I can hear myself. Which means if I can hear myself, people can hear me. No, right. Not no, really. No, I can hear him in my headphones. Oh. He's good. Don't exactly. worry about it. Fuck off. Oh, my God. Why are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm just... How long have you guys been doing the instruments that you have been? Do uh, you want bass? Do you want guitar? Uh, Plucking sing- those strings. Singing wise, I actually started singing back in like fourth or fifth grade when I was in choir. I don't know why I was in choir. Aww. I did choir. wasn't bad. Eh, it was okay for me. It didn't really help. <laughs> um, and then guitar wise, 
I actually got my first guitar back in seventh grade, and then uh, the guy I was learning to play from, you know, he was dating my mom at the time. Things didn't work out, so for the longest time, I just didn't play guitar. I mean, I would pick it up every now and then, but nothing special. And then last summer, when I was in the band Zero Counts Two, uh, Troy or Jerry or Kyle, even though Kyle, I'm pretty sure you're not listening because you're in the Navy right now, but um, pretty much the guitarist at the time, he ended up having issues in regards to conflicts with weed and the band so we ended up getting rid of him well the night before the show night before you know our show it's like okay we need a guitarist what are we gonna do went to guitar center bought a guitar amp and i'm like all right i'll do it that's awesome yeah i was there that day yes you were you were you helped us what about you kyle uh started playing baseball three years ago yeah yeah basically what what made you pick up the bass Besides, I know you said Green Day, but uh, was it a song? Was it the the person that actually got me to pick up a bass? He's not listening. I know he's not. Was uh, my friend Chris, and I was thinking about actually playing guitar for the longest time. And he goes, "Fuck that! Get uh, get a bass because there's too many guitars." It's like what? He's like, no, you know ma- what? He does have a point because yeah, because everyone wants to be a guitarist, and I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'll, I'll give it a shot. Which so. means that you can also play guitar. Because if you know bass, it's got to be an easy transition, right? Uh, it, I it's mean, I, I've tried. I could. I mean, I have bass, ha- bass player hands. You know, yeah. Giant. I'm making no comment. You can talk about your hands all you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying away from this one. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying away from this one. And you go looking at your phone and not talking well, to me anymore? I, I, no, I just got a text from my stepdad saying that I can thank my mother for putting me in choir. <laughs> I thought I joined on my own free will. Oh, e- everything, God. everything you do as a kid is forced. Yeah. Except when you're playing in the dirt eating mud pies. <laughs> um, I, made, I made a mud pie once. I didn't eat it, though. That's really gross. <laughs> I didn't eat it. <laughs> did no, but why would you make a mud pie? I don't know. My stepdad We're guys. Was a good like, idea. How did you not blow up your oven? <laughs> I didn't cook it. I see what she did there. Uh, did you lose yet? God damn it, it hasn't been twenty minutes. Actually, <laughs> I forgot about yeah, it. So. it yeah, <laughs> we just talked about the game like five minutes ago. It hasn't been five minutes. Are we seriously gonna argue about? Boom, this Rob. Look at my hair color. What I is think, my hair color? I think I understand blonde. now. I, I forget yeah. very easily. Rob, blonde. Anyway. Anyway. Yes. So, who can you mm. compare your sound to? Like your songs, the, the songs that I haven't heard. Like, is there somebody that's influenced you sound-wise, playing-wise, metal, punk, anything mixes in with it? Um, in regards to when I'm writing guitar tracks and whatnot, you know, I just look at, you know, the sound of what other bands have done before. And it just gives me a general idea of where to go, what not to do. Um, But usually when I'm writing, because I am self-taught in the sense that I can just play random stuff. I don't know chord names and whatnot. I'll be honest about that. But if it sounds good, it's like, okay, play one note. All right. Play the next note. It's like, okay, and I just go from there. If it doesn't sound good, then I try and switch it up. It's all basically random. But it's not influenced by somebody that you've already heard before? Um, kind of kind of hard to say that. But I, I mean, obviously, you mentioned, like, face-to-face and bad religion. But are you basing, like, ideas from what you've heard from them? Or guitar riffs? Or are you creating your own? Are you trying to make your lyrics style kind of like what they've done before? Um, in regards to lyrics... I'll write about anything and everything, really. I mean, I've written political-based lyrics. I've written um, uh, songs about how shitty Joliet is. Yeah, but then Rob yet, has yeah, but then too. Again, you come back here. I know it's horrible, um, but apparently Tomahawk isn't even better. When you the, the cedar is nice, but the people there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying away from this one because I've never been there. I used to want to live there, but then when I went there a few weeks ago to pick them up. And there, I met like some of the kids in the town. Ugh. Are they listening? Them. Uh, yeah, they're still listening, Rob. 
I'm kidding. <laughs> well, actually, no. <laughs> no, if, you're if, not. If Stephanie, if Stephanie's listening, she was cool. I don't know if Steph's listening or not. I don't like, know. there, there, were some of the kids that were there were. No, were. I come from Elmhurst. Do you know how many pricks are in that town? Oh, it's not a matter of them being pricks. It's a matter of them being. Just say the word. I have Thank you. Oh, hicks. Yeah. Not and pricks, Kyle, hicks. Kyle, that you phrase just lit up because she said Elmhurst. She was talking about the town, not the cemetery. <laughs> I know what she's talking about. You don't get me going. Um, but don't be mad. I guess the I'm big. Not you mad. I guess the biggest culture shock about Tomahawk is that I went from a town of. There's what, 170,000? 200,000 people. Almost 200,000 people in Joliet to a town of like. 3,000. 3,369 the last time I checked on Wikipedia. Is, is that like the exact number or did you just it, make that up so you could say 69? No, it's 69. <laughs> it's 364 or 369. That's I a big can't difference. Remember. Well, 364 and 369, big difference. It's only five That's people. Five, yeah. It's five. one family. I know. If that. But anyway. No, I, I have that same feeling because we've got a lake house and I go up there and there's like nobody around. You know, it's it's weird being up there with the quiet, not having like a lot of people around. Yeah. You know, you're you're in the middle of country and where you come here, it's like you see all the different styles and everything. Whereas when you go up there, you feel like the outcast because obviously you're wearing your minor threat shirt, you're wearing your you <laughs> know your baggy jeans. I go out there looking the way I am, I probably look like a clown, like. You would get some very interesting looks, that's for sure. And I don't care. I still get bad looks when I go up there and I'm wearing, like, a Lamb of God shirt or Metallica. Like, I go out uh, in public. I like, I like going out to places like that wearing, like, my shirts that are that offend, like, close-minded people. Oh, and yeah, I know. Like, my Whitechapel shirt I got at Summer Solder, and on the back it says, you're all a fucking waste of life. <laughs> yeah. Something tells me a bunch of Christians would bitch about that. Probably. Up there, probably. Well, a lot of Christians would bitch about Cody's behemoth shirt on the back says Youth Against Christ. But th- that's Cody. Cody does unspeakable things when he's drunk. <laughs> he's listening. I don't <laughs> care. So what about you guys metal-wise? I know that we've talked about the bands that have influenced you punk-wise. Are there metal bands that... <laughs> uh, Luco, I- you're a <laughs> fucking dork. <laughs> this one what? What's going on? What's going on Man? No, 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 no. He's not here. He's texting me shit. Oh. First he told me to stop talking about his balls on the air. Now he's telling <laughs> me I look like a fucking clown. Fucking dork. We're all talking about his balls. <laughs> I I don't know why he's got a problem with them. Because Cause they're this color. Because they're <laughs> blue. <laughs> <laughs> are, we make, are we making him feel Kidding. more uncomfortable? No. There's like three no. guys who I don't talking mean about his balls. what I say. I don't mean what I say. I love my bandmate. That's all I have to say. Kind of Off of that talk. <laughs> balls. <laughs> stop giving me ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> are there metal influences to your music that you play? Um. Actually, some of the me- like one of the metal bands I listen to a lot is Five Finger Death Punch. Oh. I saw I saw the picture of your shirt. America. That is a badass shirt. <laughs> Fucking love those guys. What the fuck, Pop one or the other one? Yeah, the one fu- that had the brass knuckles on it. Yeah, yeah fuck, fuck Pop. Fuck Pop. Yeah. Um, well, that's every Five Finger shirt that has brass knuckles on it. No, but his what was it? It's got the brass knuckles. It says it says it F- says five F- DP just going down this. In the, n- in the knuckles and uh, fucking badass. Yeah. I love them. They're playing the rave November fourth, and I so want to go because because uh-huh. listen to this. It's Rev Theory, Hatebreed, and all that remains. Um, oh, man. and they're not coming to Chicago. God I thought it. that tour was coming to Chicago. I looked it up everywhere I could and couldn't find the date for Chicago. Oh, so they are playing the rave in Milwaukee November fourth. Go see Five Figure Death Punch because the new album is supposed to be coming out. America. America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. America. All right, so I think now is a good time to uh, take another break and listen to some more music that you guys have brought in. Right. Obviously, you only had one track of your own, so. Sadly. Just, just I yeah. think you need to uh, enlighten these metal listeners for once and give them a taste of, you know, metal and punk. And I think Rob, it's because any? they mix very well. So you don't have any. Do you have anything like that? And we're going through an iPod. And we're picking a song. Go through it. And while they're doing it, you've been listening to A Piece of Metal. I am Morgan Danielle, and we are at 4055 North Milwaukee Avenue, across from the lovely but run-down Portage Theater, yeah, which yeah, yeah, will be playing Pulp Fiction at 8 p.m. <laughs> on Friday for free. So uh, 
Yeah, th- there's the address. So come and stalk us. <laughs> I want people to look at me while I'm in this window because it gives yeah, me something to do. Yeah, there's a window do. right on the street. We see, can all it, see you. Drive see, by and moon us. See, what yeah. this, this window gives you an uh, ample amount of opportunity. Just I to feel like a fish somebody. in a fish tank. I know. All right, can we fill this with water? No. <laughs> <laughs> I drown. Okay. Anyway, play your damn music. Okay. And oh. this is Raise the Stakes, playing metal and punk. Um, uh, For you. Listeners, uh, it's playing. I can hear myself. My brother. Is the music playing? Uh, it's and yeah. go. Yeah. And we are back with a piece of metal. I am Morgan Danielle, and I've been talking for the past couple hours with Raise the Stakes, a band from Joliet, and a punk rock band, nonetheless, because as most people have experienced in the metal scene. Um, Metal bands usually do a lot of, not a lot, but there is very common uh, to see a band doing a punk cover, such as like Slayer did Undisputed Attitude, um, Metallica did a few songs of punk off of Garage Inc., uh, you know, Anthrax does punk covers time to time, you know, they're very influenced by that, and uh, you know, Misfits, depending on what album you're listening to, can get very heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of dark theme stuff there that yep. can cross <coughs> into metal. And then, you know, they, they influence a lot of our music, you know. Um, it's just sped up a little bit more. <laughs> a little yep. bit. It can be aggressive in its own take, and, you know, they still have what we call a mosh pit, a circle pit. You know, there's very similarities to both. And um, you guys have been awesome tonight. I'm sorry that uh, Tony wasn't here to meet you guys He's a little bit on hiatus right now. Um, And Dennis, I have to break this news, but Dennis is unfortunately not with us um, anymore at the moment. He's had some stuff come up in his life that he is unable to attend the shows at the moment. So I've been happy to meet you guys, though. It's been fun. Well, thank you for having us on. How about you guys do a rundown one more time of the show that you guys are playing on the 23rd? Get people, you know, where they can find you guys, Facebook, whatever. Uh, as, you know, was mentioned, our band name is Raise the Stakes. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, we are playing a show October 23rd at Mojo's in downtown Joliet. Pre-sale tickets are $22 at the door. It's 28 The show goes, the doors open at 1 p.m. and the show goes till 11 p.m. You can get tickets from you guys, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. For the $22? 22 What so time do you guys go on? We are uh, not sure yet. You're not sure? No. Nope. That's usually determined, like, with mojos Man, and everything. One that's to usually 11, determined, like, that's a that long-ass day. show. Yeah. yeah. There's, oh. what, Damn. 13 bands in total? Uh, yeah. Including Misfits and Juicehead, and then the local bands, yeah, about 13. Yep. Is your mic on, Kyle? Yeah. I, I think it is. I can hear myself. Okay. As long as you can hear yourself, you're in. Awesome. Just well, I want to tell you, uh, Phil Bunton, he yes. does Metal Fury. Um He's looking for bands all the time to play Mike's Love and Music. Mm-hmm. You guys should definitely get in touch with him. I know he's looking for a band. He might still be looking for a band for September 16th and September 30th. It's out in Summit. Um, and then he's looking to book bands through October. So if yeah. you guys need more shows building up or after to the Misfit show, you should get in contact with him. All well, right. I was thinking about that because um, I know he did a punk night a few months ago, but I, I don't think it went down really well, so I don't know if he's going to be doing that because he mainly looks for metal bands. But I can talk to him and see if he's still looking for more uh, well, punk Well, then in general, or if you guys know people looking for shows that are metal or whatever. Yeah. Um, just a few quick announcements that I've written down. Um, shows coming up. Uh, there's nothing really this weekend, show-wise, maybe... No, not really. It's mostly like this month going into October when things start to get really big because it's fall. You know, Halloween's going to be coming up. Um, so this is what I found. If I miss something, you know, shout me out here on Facebook and uh, let me know what you guys got going on band-wise. Um, Tony's Northside Bash at Nightcap is happening on September 10th. That's with Dead Man's Hand, Under Protest, Skull King, and Monk 9. Uh, September 11th, um, 21 and Older show at The Exit. Uh, Beneath the Stairs is actually playing with um, they're playing downstairs but upstairs is going to be Rain, Inferno, Disembodiment and Impale. Impale Impale is getting huge. Yeah they are. They play like every show that I announce. That with like Alchemy Rising and Apocrypha. 
What? <laughs> Ever, <laughs> I, <laughs> what? If I butcher a name, I'm sorry. No, yeah, it's I think what you I right. do. Apocrypha. It's, it's Apocrypha. I think I think that's how you say that's it. That's a cluster fuck to see. I, I don't even think Steve's listening though. But no, but Impale is just and I've heard on go, I've everything. heard uh, good things about Rain Inferno because Cody, our friend, he's a big fan of them. He's friends with their singer Cody. Yeah. Um, September 22nd at Nightcap is Skinwalker with Art of Flesh. And it's to help kick off the Chicago Horror Film Festival, which people should definitely be checking out. Um, there's also going to be a Chicago Horror Film Festival thing on the 25th. I don't know where it's premiering, but my friend is actually, um, she's an actress, and she wrote this really cool story for this short film called What They Say. And she's actually been nominated for... Um, a Best Actress Award in a horror nice. film. Nice. Um, Very nice. Because it's, it's all like local stuff, you know. It's it's horror films. And people like yeah. work their asses off. So obviously like Skinwalker and everything have been supporting that. Um, and then the CD release show for Beneath the Stairs has been announced to be at Ye Old Town Inn September 30th. And they are also playing with Skinwalker, Sorvera, uh, 12 Gauge Solution, which you know, Skinwalker, Beneath the Stairs, Sorvera, um, who else have I had on the show now? Um, beneath the stairs, yeah. So I got everybody, pretty much, that I've had on the show. You know, they keep coming up. That's awesome. Because I have been dying, and if they're listening, in pale, I am looking for you to be on this show. I was I, just about to say, you I gotta get a pale on. this fucking name, and I'm like, hello, come on my show. So they're also playing the 25th at yeah. Mike's. With Rain Inferno, They Die Screaming, Odin Rot, and Apocrypha. See? Ooh. There's Apocrypha, people. I, I need them, too. I keep saying Apocrypha. I need to put a face to the name that I keep saying. It's insane. Well, just look them up and keep bugging them. They'll come on eventually, I'm, I'm trying sure. trying that, and I want Remora. They're yeah. not contacting me. I, I almost me. did vocals for them a few years ago. What the fuck, dude? When they dude? were looking for vocalists. You should. I, th- I, I really didn't like the commute, like, every... No, every I like bet. two days to going up to Lombard from Joliet. Oh, that's not cool. You live in Lombard? No, I live in Joliet. <laughs> oh, they we're we're, we're all Lombard. Joliet. So you guys are able to get to band practice and everything? Pretty much. Yeah, right. What about uh, the Jesus? Usually we practice at his house, but he's willing. Because he's got the drums. He's willing to transport his drum set. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You have a drummer that is really committed, probably because he's been playing for three months and really wants to play music, which is a good thing. He's you know? really good. Like when um, we were over there Saturday, he uh, asked if we wanted to jam first or hear what he could play. Well, well I, let's just say he blew your mind. Yeah, Let's go that route. he put his headphones in for his iPod and ended up playing "Waken the Demon" by Bullet for My Valentine. That is badass. And then he told us how long he's been playing. And it's like, uh, what? What? <laughs> so, note to bands that need drummers: the trick is to go to a guitar center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to guitar center. And, and to listen on. with your ears as to who you can hear yeah. playing go drums, go and you might uh, for about a week yeah. you might be surprised at who you might find. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, congratulations on that. Because I was like, what is this going to be this big news on our show today? Like, <laughs> do they get signed? Yeah, we can, we can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just wish. I that, mean, that, that's a wet dream we need to wake up from. I that's mean, pretty awesome. much when uh, our last drummer quit, it, I got a text from him at 630 in the morning. We tried talking to him. 630 in the morning, dude. Yeah. And then we that tried Dude, ta- all that drinking last night made me realize I don't want to be in this band anymore. <laughs> It's not even that. We, me and him, me and him crash around five thirty. An hour later, there comes that fucking text. Yeah, and it, you know, can't drink with you anymore, dude. It's too much for me. We I quit. Just do boop. <laughs> if you can't, I have a bedtime. It's ten thirty. He made me stay up longer than I should have. Well, we tried talking to him, and he just got this high and mighty attitude about you know him going to lessons, and it's like, Ugh. it's like, all right, you know what? You know what? It's Done. Fun. Sounds like King Henry. And then we pretty much ended up at Guitar Center for about the next week straight looking at random stuff. Lights one day, guitars another. You and your guitar strings because you couldn't string guitar. Guitar strings because I kept having problems stringing my guitar because I was in such a bad mood all the time. Go figure. You're a guitarist. So you have problems stringing your own guitar. Shut up. I had problems. I was hey, no one's he, perfect. He couldn't handle his G-string. He, if, he's got, <laughs> he, if he's got anger issues... Yeah, he can he, pluck it out. He was mad he couldn't pluck the G-string while fingering A minor. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Rob just randomly... His mom is listening. How 
How dare you? I don't think my mother cares very much about that. I think that's where she's like, done. <laughs> oh, hey, who's... mom, if you're still listening. I, I knew you'd say the first half, but the second half, I didn't <laughs> think you'd say on the air. I have to say, that was a really good guitar reference. I like how you brought that back. That was amazing. Good that was job. But, Good job. You know, Rob was talking about randomly going to Guitar Center because he was looking for a keyboard. We went, and everything's working out now. That's so. awesome. I'm happy for you guys, and I'm excited to hear um, how the show goes at Misfits. I don't think I can make it out just because I got work that night, and I'm taking a lot of days off <laughs> coming up. Yeah. But I really want to hear how the show went. I want to hear a lot more music from you guys because you have, what, two songs up on your Facebook right now? Uh, we have two. We have to rework one because it got screwed up somehow. But, yeah. It was basically the drums that were out of t- out of time. Yeah. Do you have a plan that. as to when you think the quote album is going to be out? Um, in regards to like a demo or something. Yeah. More than likely, once we get four to five songs done, then we'll just you know go places, hand them out, you know, just to get our name out there. And well, when you're there. done with it, definitely email me it, and we'll play them on our show. So we'll the do demo that. will be done before the Misfits show. Yeah, That's awesome. Okay, thank you, Rob. I, I was You're gonna, welcome. I was going to say the same thing. We can just release a demo at the Misfit Show. Yeah, the way we were cracking out music and whatnot. We're not wasting any time. So. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. Well, thank uh, you for having those us. Those listening, you can find Raise the Stakes on their Facebook page, and I will be posting a link on our page as well. Um, they played their song Man Up tonight, which was pretty badass, if you ask me. And those interested more in punk rock there is a ton of it if you look for it but punk if not, not you know dead. punk isn't dead you know and it's pretty close closely related to metal as much as people t- tell me off for it but whatever fuck them yeah just worry about thrash metal kids they don't like to admit that no punk they don't came before oh, thrash right. god how you doing to premacy if you're <laughs> like- <laughs> oh, oh shit Jesus. did you really bring that up i did see now if it was me someone would have hit me I don't care. Oh, Alexis, by the way, I just gip slapped Eddie. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> don't know what that means, but... You ever you ever watch NCIS? No, uh, kind of, here and there. Uh, well, yeah. Gip slap. Yeah. Anyways. If you didn't do it to me, I'll die. <laughs> Stop milking that. <laughs> what a great way to the end of the show. I'm serious, though. I, I know, but still, that you've been milking that for, what, three years? It's been this has been a piece of metal. I am Morgan Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> She's Four trying years. to stray away from her. I, all she, I don't heard, she don't want to hang out with us no All I heard was <laughs> milking, and I figured <laughs> I'd leave you to your own thing. I don't want <laughs> listeners to be like, what the fuck are they doing under the table over there? Sounds, oh, sounds, yeah. Sounds about right with Eddie. Oh. One last thing before we go. The game. Ha! I was Play the same it. Thing. You'll lose every time. <laughs>